Welcome to Nightline, the morning after, on ESPN 580 Orlando, WDBO, Night Nation's only call-in show, goes live now. All right, hello Night Nation, this is Andrew Fagley coming to you from the Victory Casino Cruises.com studio uh, at ESPN Orlando 580, brought to you by Chad Bar Law. This is Nightline the morning after, raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Give Chad Bar a call at 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com. We are taking your calls, 844-225-5580 on the Dever team line, 844-225-80, or your texts at 21232, or AP underscore Nightline on Twitter. All right, so what a strange week in sports, or not in sports, uh, what a strange week, period. I got uh, Ben Stout here with me, Big Social. And then we have uh, Chase Bunker as well in the other on the other side there. How you guys doing? Uh, it's a week. Okay, it's a week. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. Sorry, I didn't have Ben's mic on. <laughs> it's it's all good. I'm, uh, yeah, it's definitely a week. Um, we're going on day three. Uh, no sports. Um, I'm I'm trying to deal with it the best I can. I yeah. just watched an axe throwing championship just to get my sports in. Now I feel like. I feel like I'm at reached the lowest point right. of my yeah. sports addiction. Well, yeah. Well, you know, and I guess people are probably going to wonder, why are you guys still doing a sports show? <laughs> well, you know, there's all kinds of things to talk about, even if there's not sports going on. So well, we're going to talk about them. Later on in the show, we're going to have uh, Danny White, the athletic director from um, UCF, and his entire press conference that he gave the other day. Uh it's 13 minutes long. We're going to play the entire thing for you because I want you to hear what he had to say about this. I want you to hear why all this stuff has been, you know, why they took the action that they did. Uh, some of the action that they took, obviously, uh, you know, most of you know at this point, if you're listening to this radio station, uh, the NCAA tournament was canceled. Baseball was canceled. Uh, you know, all the spring sports, all the winter sports championships were canceled. And and that's, that's unprecedented. It's never happened before. I don't think even during, you know, things like nine 11 and, right. and all that stuff, everything wasn't canceled. It was just, you know, postponed for a little while, but when they start canceling things, it's a little different. Yeah, what what uh, it kind of all started, all kind of all came to a head on Wednesday afternoon, going into the evening, and what happened on Wednesday evening, uh, just for the entire sports world in general. And I've been saying to many many of family and friends over the last couple of weeks, I said the entire sports world is looking at the NBA. They're trying to that they're they're the big behemoth in the room right now, without without um, the NFL going on or football going on. And so I think the entire sports world was looking at the NBA. And what went down um, on Wednesday night with the Jazz Thunder game and that getting called off and the players quarantining the locker room and then Rudy Gobert tests test positive for it, just the just the kind of business aspect of that to me, uh, the sports aspect of that, where you have a, a number of administrators that are that are not used to dealing with this. They're they're not. That's not their bailiwick. That's not what they do. And they're the logistics behind trying to quarantine those players. Get it all. I, I realized within the course of an hour's I, 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 course of a couple hours, I couldn't you know keep my eyes off the TV. It was just so fascinating. Um, but I realized over the course of a couple hours that everything is going to change. And sure enough, Thursday morning. And going on into Thursday, it just kind of kept snowballing after that. Snowballing is yeah. a good uh, way to put that because it, it's definitely snowballed. Right. Uh, the whole thing is snowballed. It started with that, and then it just went on and went on. And then the, then the, the tournaments were going to be played with nobody in the arenas, and then all of a sudden now they're not going to be played at all. And I mean, it's it for the student athletes, and I talk about the student athletes a lot. Yep. This, I mean. It sucks. It's yeah. the only word I can use for those student athletes. It totally sucks. Um, it's you've played your entire life to get to that point, 
of having a championship and being able to go to the NCAA tournament or, you know, whatever in baseball, basketball, whatever it is, you've, you've worked your entire life to get there. And now, especially the seniors aren't going to have their chance Yeah, or, you know, seniors or, you know, cause there's, there's guys that, that aren't uh, seniors that, that get into it, obviously, but yeah, I've, well, you, you just never know when you're going to get that chance again, right? I mean, this this past year um, of UCF basketball, last year, I should say, that was the first time we had been in the NCAA tournament for over, over you know, 15 years, essentially. And and so you just never know when that's your only year that you have in the course of your, uh, you know, college career to make a big tournament like that. And growing up as a basketball player myself, that was my absolute dream to be able to go to the NCAA tournament and be a part of that March Madness, the big dance, as they say. Uh, you know, I got to be, I, I got to realize that dream in 2004, um, but any team after 2005 wasn't able to do that. And I feel so bad for those players that, uh, you know, play for Rutgers, for instance, that hadn't made it since 1991, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, any, we talked about so many teams in the AAC tournament having a chance to win that tournament. Um, you just never know what could have happened had they gotten the chance to um, to to move on and, and, and play, whether it be in front of fans or not. And, it, and it's just really unfortunate for those student athletes, especially. Yeah. Chase, uh, what what's your I mean, what do you think about all this stuff? I welcome back, by the way. Thank you. You, you haven't it, been here with us for, for quite a while. I You've know. You've been doing have, had other assignments. It's nice to have you back. It, yeah, it, good to have it you, feels buddy. it feels great to be back, uh, to be honest. Um, it, it's I was on the board like when everything was just transpiring and just like it, it was just another level just the fact that like okay um like i was at a flag football game and i heard somebody say oh hey the nba season is canceled and i thought that was a joke like huh, 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 okay whatever <laughs> and i look at my notification <laughs> like oh she was right yeah and then just to see like the cataclyst or it was like pretty much the catalyst of like how everything has transpired and the fact that not only like like Ben, you mentioned it earlier. Like, I feel bad for all these collegiate players that, like Dayton, I thought had a great chance of going all the way. Absolutely, I thought FSU had a great chance of going all the way. You had all these teams. <laughs> Hofstra, no one cares about Kansas. Kansas is just going to go out in the second round anyway. Oh, we all know that. Okay, okay. Bill Self, we were number one. Overrated. By the way. Um, then uh, Kansas Hofstra, was number one. By the way, Hofstra like made it for the first time in 19 years, and now they can't play it. Yeah. And so I felt so bad for all these teams. But the thing I found even more baffling was the fact that they said winter and spring. Yeah. So the championship games that are in June are already canceled. And so when you have a team like the UCF baseball team, which is really good, yeah, and could have made a, had a really legit good, chance, they had a legit year. chance to make a really good. I'm not saying that they would have gone all the way, but at least like. Make a really good run, and that gets taken away from them. And yeah. not only that, you have all the the money for all these economies. Like Omaha, the city of Omaha, I think it was like seventy million dollars that they lose out on just because the College World Series isn't being played over there. Oh, wow! So I can only imagine what it's like for the March Madness games all over the country. Yeah, that's. I mean, all those places, yes, that were booked for you know, having the NCAA championship, I mean, uh, the tournament games, all those places are going to have issues. Orlando, especially, obviously, we're in Orlando doing this show, and Orlando, with all the conventions and every, all the tourism, I mean, it's crazy because yeah. the, the uh, when I think when really people started freaking out here was when the, the theme parks closed. I mean, oh, that's, yeah. that's a yeah. big, big deal. Yeah. Uh, for our theme parks to close in Orlando, uh, you know, and, and it's it's honestly become kind of mass hysteria out there, um, unfortunately. Yeah, it's wild. You mentioned the theme parks. I at uh, middle school and high school, I was in the Dr. Phillips area. And, you know, that's on the same, my neighborhood was on the same grid as Universal. So whenever we had a hurricane, a natural disaster, we always got the power first because uh, Universal had to get back up and running. But, these, you know, you mentioned the theme parks like that's. That's when it, be, in my opinion, really, you know, besides the sports world items, um, that's when it became really real, real for the <laughs> for the Orlando natives. And yeah. and and I agree with you, uh, Chase. I, I the 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 spring sports being canceled um, is probably 
anyone looking at this as objectively as possible um, probably is the most disappointed in that because they have a, they they didn't just have the end of their season or their postseason tournament left. I, I mean, we we don't know where we're going to be as a as a country or in involving this virus a week from now, let alone a month from now. So why not come out and say it is postponed? Um, and, and then, and then that allows them a month from now to say, Hey, we've, we've looked at it. It's canceled. Uh, it, it just get, not giving that leeway is, is a little bit confusing yeah. and frustrating. And I hope that they go back and, and, you know, look at things a little bit more, uh, whenever this, you know, goes away, it, it, it will go away at some point. Obviously everybody knows that, um, it's not as bad as it could be. It could, you know, really, I guess people need to know and, and, this maybe isn't the place, but but this the whole reason that they've done all these things that they've done by canceling mass gatherings and all that stuff is to just make this not spread as much as fast as it could have to tax our our healthcare system. Yeah, lower the curve they call it. Yeah, yeah flattening the curve exactly. Um, and I understand what they're trying to do, but but just the financial um, aspect of all this stuff with all the companies and all the, all this everybody that's involved in that is it's just devastating for a lot of i mean what's it going to do to UCF sports budget and stuff like that uh it's just it's ridiculous um so basically they said all fall and winter sports men's soccer women's soccer volleyball football men's basketball women's basketball no practices or common uh competition for 2 weeks they said and then per NCAA policy there will be a dead period for all sports recruiting activities until at least April 15th. Rehab and voluntary workouts are allowed. Student athletes will have access to sports medicine, weight room, and the Garvey Nutrition Center and practice facilities. And then the spring sports, baseball, softball, track and field, men's tennis, women's tennis, men's golf, women's golf, and rowing, no competition for two weeks, they say still. Um, per NCAA policy, there will be a dead period for recruiting uh, until at least April 15th. And then, uh, yeah, so spring football is another thing that's that's going to have to – that's a that's a big thing all over the country, not just UCF. Uh, a lot of people were doing their spring football. The NCAA is going to have to do something about that if they even want to continue the – uh, football season this year they're gonna have to let them have so many practices i believe you know like they should i mean they've got to be ready they've got to be in shape for for football so i don't know if that you know moves the whole thing back a little bit or whatever uh i mean there's just there's a lot of unknown right now so i guess you know we can speculate all we want and i think just, of ways to do it but. i just still don't know why the ncaa was like canceled and not hey let's Delay it for 30 days, and we'll come back to it like every other organization. NBA's waiting, uh, like hockey's waiting, which hockey, those people are afraid of nothing, yeah. and they're still like taking well, precaution I, on I this. I think that it was a hysterical way to, to deal with it. I mean, it was it was hysteria, and they, they're just like, let's just cancel everything. You know, yeah, forget they, it. They panicked you know? a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they it's... panicked. I mean, when when they're talking Hopefully. about uh, you know stopping a, a revenue, you know, one of the largest revenue generators for the sport in the in the NCAA tournament, that you know, once it all, once the NBA is suspending their season, and you know, Selection Sunday was supposed to be today, uh, which is you're going to see me cry in a second, yeah, because uh, wow. that's not happening. Um, but the but you know, once that went down, they had they basically were they forced their hand. They had to do something about the NCAA tournament. And the best thing to do for that at that time was cancel it but again going back they could have easily instead of just continuing that cancel uh cancellation they could have easily said um we're going to reevaluate the spring sports in a month or two or whatever it may be yeah well i will say on this show today we're going to talk about all this stuff we're going to talk about the shock of it and we're going to play danny white's press conference coming up here in a bit after that, we're going to talk about other stuff, though. Um, we're we're, we're going to get off the whole shock of it and how wrong everybody was and all that, and we're just gonna we're gonna come up with some some fun and crazy stuff to talk about UCF sports uh, in the future. But for today's show, we're going to continue with with all of this and and you know express our shock. 
And and I just want to say, um, you know, feel free to call in, text in, let us know what you what you want us to talk about. Whether you want to talk about it with us uh, over the air, uh, just uh, shoot us a text, shoot us a call, let us know. All righty, hey, we're going to take a little bit of a break, and we'll be right back on Nightline the morning after. The coronavirus has deeply affected the sports world. As of right now, none of our players, uh, no one currently has symptoms. We will get past this. In due time, we'll be playing NBA basketball again. Stay tuned to ESPN Orlando on the air, online and social media on Facebook and Instagram for the latest updates from around the sports world. And if the games play, we will have them for you right here on Orlando's home for the biggest events in sports. ESPN 580 and FM 96.5 HD2. The average car or truck on the road is 10 years old. So how do you afford to keep your vehicle running after your warranty ends? Don't overpay for parts at the dealer or auto parts store. Come to Budget You Pull It for the largest selection and lowest prices on used auto parts in town. Budget You Pull It is a self-service auto salvage yard with more quality used parts than anyone else around. We also pay top dollar for your car, no matter what shape it's in. Plus, we buy scrap metal, small or large quantities. Pull your own parts, but don't pull a lot of cash out of your wallet. Check us out at Budget, the letter U, pullit.com. Clinical trials allow researchers to introduce new hope by providing participants access to cutting-edge and potentially life-saving treatments. Speak with your doctor and visit standuptocancer.org slash clinical trials to learn more. Together, we can stand up for all of us. If you have a specific medical problem, you call a specialist. Broken leg? Call an orthopedist. Cataracts? Call an ophthalmologist. At Premier Men's Medical Center, our doctors specialize in ED and PE. Listen to Dr. Schwartz, a renowned expert in men's health. I'm Dr. Schwartz. If you're experiencing ED or PE, Premier Men's Medical Center has custom blended medications to help you last longer in the bedroom, regardless of age or past medical history with no pain or surgery. In fact, you'll see results right in the office, guaranteed, or your exam is free. Patients are now lasting 30, 60, 90 minutes or longer. And best of all, the treatments are affordable. Men, if Viagra, Cialis, or Levitra have let you down, call Premier Men's Medical Center for a private consultation with our highly skilled physicians. Call 407-270-3940. 407-270-3940. That's 407-270-3940. Hey, this is Travis Dever, Kai's Real Estate, the Dever team, New Smyrna Beach. Your source for real estate and everything else, New Smyrna Beach. Proud sponsor of Nightline and Nightline Post Game Live. Call me anytime at 386-690-1636. That's 386-690-1636. One six three six. Let me show you my hometown, New Smyrna Beach, UCF's favorite beach. Go Knights and charge on. Whether it's on AM 580, FM 96.5 HD2, Alexa, or Google Home, we are everywhere you hear audio. ESPN 580 Orlando, Orlando's home for the biggest events in sports. And now... Back to Nightline, the morning after, on ESPN 580 Orlando, WDBO. Call now at 844-225-5580 or text at 21232. All right, back live from the VictoryCasinoCruises.com studio, the home of the only legal sportsbook in Central Florida, this is Andrew Fegley, back on Nightline the morning after, brought to you by Chad Bar Law, raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Give Chad a call, 407-599-9036, for a free consultation, or visit chadbarlaw.com. All right, so this second segment, I want to play the full press conference that Danny White gave, I believe it was on Friday, uh, for you all to hear. Uh, I know that you can find this in other places, but I, I figured that we would play it here for the people that haven't heard it and for the people that are just listening. Um, so I guess we'll do that right now, and then we'll come back a little bit later and uh, talk some more about it. Obviously, this has been an unprecedented week in college sports and uh, concerned about everybody's health and well-being, uh, but uh, our primary responsibility is these student-athletes, and we're going to make sure that... Uh, we're doing the very best things for, for their uh, safety and their health and uh, uh, working through a lot of decisions the last few days, and I imagine we'll continue that uh, moving forward. So open up to any questions. Danny, what's the last 24 hours been like for you, and, and what's it involved, I guess, being in communication with, I'm sure, conference officials and maybe some other people from the NCAA? Uh, it's been a whirlwind. been drinking from a fire hose a little bit, but still kind of getting over the shock and I'm not sure I have, of the, the cancellation of 
of NCAA championships. I, I certainly uh, would have hoped we would have postponed, and who knows what the result of that would be. I don't know, as nobody does, what the, this uh, virus is going to do in the coming weeks and months. But, um, you know, from my probably myopic vantage point working in college sports and knowing how hard these kids work their entire lives for those opportunities, I think it's been really hard for uh, all of our our staff and especially our coaches that work so closely with the student athletes. But most importantly, really hard for the student athletes to see that opportunity go away. I mean, they work unbelievably hard for those uh, opportunities. So, uh, but uh, there's smarter people than me that are are looking at that, uh, the health professionals, and uh, I know that uh, everybody that's uh, in a decision making role is to, making decisions to the very best of their abilities. Uh, Danny, can you just kind of talk about you know how fast things were flying, particularly on Wednesday night? I know much of us were at the UC of Miami baseball game, and we see you know the NBA saying they're suspending the season, and all of a sudden the player has coronavirus, and next you know fans aren't coming to the you know conference tournament, and now they're canceled. Just kind of talk about how crazy it was Wednesday going into Thursday. Yeah, it's like one decision after another, and one event after another. Obviously, with the NBA player, and uh, I, I knew where things were going at the Miami game. It was a great crowd. It was awesome to see that uh, in, the, in the new ballpark. And our baseball team and all of our spring sports are just on fire. Um, it's another reason this is so frustrating. But, um, uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, getting back from the baseball game and then seeing what happened with with the NBA and starting to wonder at that point, all right, where, where, does, this, where does this stop? And uh, I didn't realize that the next day would go like it did, but uh, – Obviously, uh, uh, the, the NCAA and um, and the you know when the, the conferences started canceling the t- tournaments. I mean, I remember I got the text about our own conference and the, that conversation was happening. And I was like, hold on a second, that that came out of nowhere. And then, th- at that point in time, I didn't realize that uh, so many other conferences were having that conversation as well. And uh, but it is a good example, I think, of you know we compete against each other all year long uh, as conferences as universities uh and i think uh if there's a positive over the last few days uh college athletics have really come together and people have made decisions and collaborated i think pretty well danny i know that the, the decision came from the nca but have you and your fellow aac athletic directors talked a little bit about um you know the idea of canceling spring championships altogether i mean maybe trying to come up with some other ideas or or was that just once the nca kind of came down with it you have to kind of follow suit uh, that's the most complicated thing we're trying to figure out right now. And uh, what are those teams focused on? You know, athletes are driven. They need something. They're, in the off season, they're working on the next season. And uh, they need something to – they need a goal. And so is it about um, getting an, an extra year of eligibility, which I strongly believe all of these – all the winter sport kids that lost their championships should get an extra year of eligibility and obviously the spring sport – student athletes as well um, or is it about seeing what happens here in the next few weeks and uh, seeing if there's a way to salvage the spring season and uh, we have been slow to make decisions and we'll continue to do that uh, I don't uh, I'm not looking to win a trophy for being the first one to make a decision obviously uh, we're going to operate in, in the safety zone and not not do anything that uh, endangers our, our student athletes or fans but uh, we're going to continue to uh, uh, kind of make decisions in phases. So the uh, decisions we made this morning were for the next two weeks, which is in lockstep with what our university did, uh, asking the, the student body to uh, uh, study remotely for the next two weeks, not return to campus if they don't have to. Um, and we're going to continue, continue to evaluate it. I don't know where we're going to be two, three weeks from now with this virus. And if things are in a much better situation, then uh, and, and there's a, a, a path forward to salvage some semblance of a spring season then we'd be open to that uh but uh uh we're 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 learning as we go here things are evolving hourly school was supposed to start up next week you know we know that the uc is telling people your students not to come back so what's the status of spring sports at the present time are they just kind of in the same mode as the regular students are they going to assemble and practice in the near term or what's kind of going on with say baseball you know tennis softball those sports uh, so for our, our spring sports, we're, we're dealing with it a little bit on a case-by-case basis, uh, wanting to hear from, from those student-athletes where their minds are. Um, if they have uh, a hope that we can compete later in the spring, then uh, we're allowing them to practice. It's all volunteer. 
uh, no student athlete. Uh, there's no such thing as mandatory right now. If they want to be here, I think that they're probably the safest here uh, with all the resources we have. Uh, uh, so our training room, our weight room is open for voluntary workouts. The spring sports are allowed to practice for the time being, uh, again, on a voluntary basis. Uh, and uh, we'll, I've asked those coaches just to kind of be connected to, to their uh, athletes and uh, make decisions that are in their best interest. And uh, we want to make sure we're listening to them right now. Do you have any information on any staff, faculties, uh, players, athletes who may have been in a situation where they, they might be isolating right now because they have symptoms that are similar to this? Is there any information about anybody within the sports department? I have not heard anything to that effect here at UCF, no. Danny, I mean, uh, it's, it's a little bit, I'm sure, probably down the road, but what sort of financial am- impact do you think this will have on a, on a program or a school like yourselves going through something like that and seeing these sports being eliminated? Uh, we don't know. We're trying to figure it out. Uh, the, the conference tournament being canceled, there's uh, financial implications, both revenue and expense there. Uh, still don't know how it's going to play out with the NCAA tournament. Uh, I don't know what their, their insurance situation looks like and all that. Um, there's potential. I mean, if we're not playing games and jumping on planes and traveling all over the country with our spring sports, there's an obvious savings there. Uh, but we have season ticket holders that have bought baseball games. We have single game uh, tickets that have already been purchased. So it's fluid. We're, we're probably not going to get a handle on that here for a, a week or two. Then you may not have an answer to this. I know driving over here, apparently the NCAA put out some sort of release in the last 30, 45 minutes about you know the potential of uh, players in spring sports receiving, of seniors receiving maybe another year of eligibility. Do you know anything about that? And would you be in support of something like that? Yeah, I, I, I'd seen, I know that conversation is going on. I think they're trying to figure it out. Uh, I'm strongly supportive of that, uh, knowing how ca- hard these kids work from the time they're five, six years old to get the, that four years of experience. Uh, it, it's an uh, unbelievable investment of, of time and capital with their families. Uh, it's an all-in thing to, to be an athlete at this level. Uh, so I, I think that the seniors and everybody on the roster should get an, an added year of eligibility. Uh, which is going to create some complications uh, with the scholarship caps. Uh, we're going to have to figure out some flexibility there uh, to, to, to make it work. Uh, and I don't think we should stop at the spring sports. Just because the winter sports got to play the whole regular season, you can't snatch away that championship uh, opportunity. Uh, I think about uh, uh, seniors, especially on our women's basketball team, that uh, I think had earned a second consecutive at-large bid. And uh, I think that should they choose to come back and play if they want to do that, I'm going to strongly support that. Danny, have you heard from any parents or anyone who's reached out to you maybe with concerns over, you know, what the school is doing and everything when it comes to the coronavirus? I haven't heard directly from parents. I know our, our, our coaches and staff work more closely with our student athletes and, and uh, families. Uh, you know, we've kind of been through the ringer here for the last few years with the hurricanes and uh, maybe a positive byproduct of that is we've we've earn some credibility with with our student athletes and their families we're going to do right by these kids at all times and i think that they they, they know that and uh we're, we'll we'll do everything we can to, to put them in the very best uh, uh very best position danny you kind of touched on this a moment ago but can you elaborate more on specifically specifically women's basketball and and did you have any conversations maybe with a kk right and you know a senior that obviously would have had to have been crushed when the news came out. Did you get any feedback from Coach Abe about, you know, how that news hit that team in, in particular? Uh, I, I have. I talked to Katie earlier today. Um, I think every single one of these teams was absolutely crushed. Uh, so uh, I, 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 I don't think it would be appropriate for me to talk to KK specifically about that. I'm sure that's a conversation probably for further down the road. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll support uh, to the extent I can uh, get an added year of eligibility for not just spring sports, but winter sports. I think it's really important. Danny, my apologies if you've addressed this already, but yep. what is the level of guidance you've received from the NCAA to this point on how to proceed? Yeah, their, their staff's been really interactive with uh, Cameron Walker, who's our uh, senior associate AD for NCAA compliance. I know they've had conversations today about uh, the additional eligibility uh, component, which is complicated. Uh, some flexibility in terms of, you know, we have, we have so many rules, so we have competitive balance 
uh, relative to in season, out of season, and we find ourselves in this weird place where sports that are supposed to be in season, we don't really know what, what that looks like. So uh, I've been uh, very happy to see um, the amount of flexibility from the, the NCAA staff and, uh, and the amount of interaction they're having with us. And obviously there's over 350 Division One schools and Division Two and Division Three. so I'm sure they're working really hard and uh, we're, we're all dealing with an unprecedented situation. Danny, you're in a unique position where you, know, you have several members of your family are also in athletics, uh, your dad and your brother and your sister. How, what is, have you had a chance to talk with them and kind of maybe see what's going on elsewhere across the country when it comes to this? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, obviously, you know, my, my brother's probably, I know he's disappointed. Uh, I was expecting a bid uh, with his team in, in, uh, in the NCAA tournament. And my brother Brian at FAU is dealing with the same set of circumstances we're dealing with. And uh, my dad was the chair of the committee. He, he, he didn't get it. Uh, he got off the hook. He didn't have anybody, uh, uh, they didn't have to sit in the front of the firing squad justifying their seatings. But uh, everybody feels the same way. I think anybody that does what we do, our immediate thought goes to, these student athletes and how hard that is uh, to, to lose that opportunity. And uh, there's nothing we could do right now, but uh, we're going to do our best to, to, to try to support them. I mean, I feel like this answer is going to be pretty obvious, but uh, the spring game, I'm sure, for football has been postponed until further notice, correct? Uh, we haven't made that announcement yet. We just haven't got to it yet. Yeah, we won't. We'll definitely be looking at postponing that. And uh, we don't know yet what, what spring football is going to look like. Uh, we already started, uh, had a few practices before our spring break. Uh, so I know that there's another conversation with the NCAA about the concept of flexibility with the normal constraints of when you can have spring practice. Uh, and if that needs to go later, then it, then it needs to go later. But everybody's going to wait and see what, what this virus does here over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I know this press conference wasn't about your contract extension that was announced the other day, but just can you briefly kind of speak about, you know, your dedication, you know, to being here for the long term with that announcement? Yeah, I, I think I get way too much credit. Uh, our, our student athletes, our coaches are uh, what they're accomplishing on the field and the court, on the track and the boats. It's, it's amazing. Um, and I think that we have a lot of work to do if we're going to sustain uh, the success that we're having. But we are very serious about building a perennial top 25 athletics department here. I've been consistent with that since the day I got here. I could be more excited uh, than I am about what we can get accomplished here. But it's going to take a lot more work. And uh, uh, I, what I like about that announcement is uh, for our donors, for our, our fans, everybody that's contributing to lifting this athletics department up, I want them to see that we are a legit uh, powerhouse in college athletics and we're going to be a, a national player and I'd be crazy for thinking about going anywhere and uh, we're just really lucky to be here. All right, thanks guys. All right, that was UCF Athletic Director Danny White talking about the NCAA cancellations and how they cancel all the spring and winter games. We just got a notification here from ESPN's Adam Schefter. The NFL players have voted to approve the proposed CBA, which will give the players an increased share of revenue. Former players added benefits and a 17-game regular season along with an expanded playoff field. We'll talk more on Nightline the morning after. This is Karen. She has an expansive piece of land where she saddles up daily. And she keeps it in shape on a John Deere 3E tractor. With attachments that hook up with ease, getting the job done is never a hassle. Whether she's putting up fence posts, grading a horse arena, or even cleaning up storm damage, Karen runs with us. Because this is more than just land. It's home. Nothing runs like a deer. Get a 3E tractor for just $139 per month at your John Deere dealer today. For additional cost information, please call toll-free 855-633-2316. Shoot Straight, a premier Smith & Wesson M&P dealer, cares about Central Florida. They offer concealed carry classes at their two Central Florida locations in Apopka and Castleberry. Shoot Straight has all the top brands and is the place to go for anything firearms. They carry brands like Sig Sauer, Beretta, Springfield, and Kimber. Plus, they have gun safes from American Security. Get more info at shoot-straight.com or call 407-889-0842. Shoot Straight, the first choice for anything firearms. Spice up your company with homemade marketing services from Tasty Gravy Creative. 
Tasty Gravy serves up a menu of budget-friendly marketing, graphic design, and public relations services customized to your specific goals. Co-owned by a UCF graduate, Tasty Gravy can help refresh your brand, strengthen your online presence, or reinforce your company's message. Contact Tasty Gravy for help with your website, social media, marketing, advertising materials, and more. Visit TastyGravy.com. Message and data rates may apply. Do you want to learn how to get started making money flipping houses right here in Orlando? If so, we have an amazing opportunity for you. We're looking for a small group of motivated individuals to join our real estate investing team. You'll be introduced to our three-step system for flipping homes right here in the local area. This is Stan Merrill, star of a es hit TV show, Flip This House. My team and I are looking for a handful of people in the Orlando area who want to learn how to get started making money flipping houses in your spare time using other people's money. Orlando is a perfect market for my system, and next week I'm holding a free two-hour educational workshop where we'll share how to get started making money flipping houses and how to build long-term wealth with income properties. To get two free tickets to Fan's Workshop, text your five-digit zip code to 82,000. Seating is extremely limited, so text your five-digit zip code to 82,000. Text in the next 10 minutes, and you'll also reserve a free copy of Fan's Money for Deals guide. Just text your zip code to 82,000. This is for the men who never settle, the ones who miss the fairway all day and still pull out the big stick, the type of guys who will always prefer to be behind the grill than in front of the camera, and the men who never let their friends forget about a high school nickname. This is the Lodge mentality. This is Twin Peaks. Craving handcrafted cocktails? Twin Peaks just introduced new tequila cocktail additions like the Smoky Herodera Margarita, made with a Smoky Sombra Mezcal. I'm Jeff Allen. Join me each and every week on the Nightline Sports Network for the AAC Report. We bring you in-depth coverage of each school in football, basketball, baseball, softball, soccer, golf, tennis, and more, as well as bring you insider interviews and focus in on the biggest games and news of the week. That's all right here each week on the AAC Report, only on the Nightline Sports Network. Whether it's on AM 580, FM 96.5 HD2, Alexa, or Google Home, we are everywhere you hear audio. ESPN 580 Orlando, Orlando's home for the biggest events in sports. And now, back to Nightline, the morning after, on ESPN 580 Orlando, WDBO. Call now at 844-225-5580 or text at 21232. Already back uh, on Nightline the morning after, this is Andrew Fagley along with Ben Stout and Chase Bunker live from the Victory Casino Cruises.com studio brought to you by Chad Barr Law, uh, raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Uh, give Chad a call, 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit Chad Barlaw. You can also call us. Our phone lines are open, by the way, 844-225-5580. If you want to talk about uh, what you just heard on the show here, you just heard the uh, uh, Danny White press conference from Friday. Uh, what do you guys think? Is Was there anything in there that you guys want to talk about right straight off the bat? I think one of the more, uh, just what we know about Danny White, I mean, he's always on the leading edge of these these things in the sense that he's not afraid to be bold and say some say some things that are, uh, or advocate for some things that maybe not every AD in the country is going to do. And one of the things that was, whether it was more nuanced or not, um, what you heard in there that not everyone is doing is really the advocate advocating for the winter sports athletes who got their championships canceled uh, this week, advocating for them to have another year of eligibility. And even the spring sports athletes, uh, NCAA came out the other day, and I believe they said that the seniors would uh, be able to look at an, an extra year of eligibility. Now, um, and he was he was advocating for all classes to receive that because it doesn't matter if you're a senior or not. Like you should be able to receive one if yeah, you, you if still like lost it. Yeah. a, a you still year. Still lost it. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. So it's real interesting to see what's going to come of that. If he's going to lead the charge for the winter sports athletes, the the basketball players in particular. Um, uh, if, if he's going to lead the charge for them receiving another year of eligibility, which brings up a really interesting topic that the NCAA is going to have to address at their level is um, the scholarships and the relief 
for the amount of scholarship that each each teams are allowed to offer their uh, full team, um, which is limited right now to a, a certain amount. If you announce, if the NCAA announces that they're going to allow extra years of eligibility, but they don't couple that with the extra scholarships it's that these teams are going to hurt in the long term. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a it's a hollow statement at yeah. that point. Absolutely, Chase. I think I just really liked Danny White's commitment to all this because he could have easily probably parlayed this job into something bigger. Like he could have gone to the quote power five schools, like if they ever need an athletic director and the fact that he's willing to stay here and just see this out. Like it, it means a lot, especially when you're at a school that's kind of known for being a stepping stone, so to say. Right. So like we just had Scott Frost, like leave to go to Nebraska. We thought Johnny Dawkins was going to leave to go to you know, some other like Duke. power five school or yeah. Duke yeah, or something Vanderbilt, along. Yeah. And so I think for at least someone of his caliber to stay, it kind of shows, Hey, UCF is going to be one of these schools from here on and athletically. Right. Well, and I think Danny White is very like, he, he's really down to earth, but the, then can escalate things if he needs to. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to play that because, you know, that entire press conference. I wanted everybody to hear everything, not just clips of it. I wanted to hear, you know, wanted you to hear what people ask and, and, and his response to all those questions, because I think that it takes a person that can, can be a little bit comforting, you know, through all of this, it's, you know, it's this part of it is not life and death of, of this whole thing, the, the sports aspect of it, but it's still, it's important to a lot of us. This is what we, you know, base our our entertainment lives on. You know, it's a big deal. It's so ingrained in our culture, as we've talked about. You know, it's just everybody in times of crisis. There's two things that that human beings like to do. At least American human beings like to do. They like to come together, which we're not allowed to really do <laughs> right. in large masses, and uh, we're social creatures, if you will. And and we fall back on sports to keep our keep our mind off, uh, you know, tough times in this country. And so, um, it's kind of strange. This this whole situation is just kind of strange from that aspect, where both of those things are not really existing. I mean, it's a huge thing. We have radio stations, ESPN five eighty Orlando, that are geared completely to sports. There's people talking about sports twenty four seven, and you know, it's and all of a sudden, all of it stopped pretty much. So it's just it's very very odd. I, I never thought that we would have a situation like this. I'm still in shock, I think, of the, of the whole thing. And, and that's why, you know, it's just it's so weird that, that, that it's happened. And, you know, I'm, I'm worried about, again, I say the revenue of all these companies that that, uh, you know, deal with with all this stuff. Nike has just announced uh, recently here that they're going to shut all their stores, which is crazy. And Nike to shut all stores in the U.S. and other parts of the world uh, amid coronavirus fears. That's that's the headline right now on on one of the the major news stations. Yeah, so, just just the NCAA website. tournament, you know, decision alone that lost tens of billions of dollars for um you know for all those companies involved so heavily with the NCAA tournament. Yeah, there's got to be relief uh, for all these schools and everything else and. We're going to uh, talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, a couple of government things that have happened as well. Uh, so I guess, do you want to talk about that real quick? You can go ahead. And... Uh, sh- sure. So I'll... there's a Florida State thing that uh, <laughs> was mentioned a little while ago that some of us have maybe agree with and some may not. Yeah. So uh, first off, I'm uh, while I'm going to talk about the Florida State Senate, um, this is not a, necessarily a political statement, so uh, I, I'm going to be careful to walk the line there. But uh, what was interesting yesterday is that two major, um, well, one major and one super minor uh, bill was uh, passed through the Florida State Senate yesterday up in Tallahassee, where um, one of them was the name, image, and likeness bill um, that affects all college sports in, in the state of Florida um, I haven't done enough research about that in order to really comment in depth, so I'm just going to say that it was passed yesterday. It was passed uh, 37 to two in the in the Florida State Senate, so that that means it's going to go to the governor's desk, uh, which I'm sure will pass uh, right away. Um, but the other one that was super minor but rather interesting to us UCF fans 
is that the Florida State Senate, uh, led by a guy named Joe Gruters, um, who is a Florida State University um, graduate, he introduced and the bill passed um, with flying colors. It passed yesterday, uh, 37 to 2, to declare the Florida State Seminoles the college basketball national champion. Um, now, Full disclosure, I grew up a Florida State fan as well as, well as a UCF fan. Um, but as a UCF fan, this is just mind-blowing to me that they, they went ahead and did this in the Florida State Senate. And I want to I want to talk about some very important differences between what UCF 2017 college football team did versus this. And I'm just going to be brief about it. I'm going to be brief about it where the UCF national champions – 2017 team they were recognized in the ncaa officially in the ncaa record book because of the coley matrix they were recognized as the number one team in the country by the coley matrix and subsequently in the ncaa record books that we had a share of the national championship in 2017 now what the florida state senate did yesterday means nothing it's basically a plaque it's not recognized by the ncaa in any right. capacity but it's just kind of interesting that um with all of the legislature that has come down on a school like ucf from tallahassee over the course of the last you know months with the roof you know the whole uh, naming rights to our stadium and and just the, and and quite frankly 2 years ago a little over 2 years ago when we declared our national champion how there was no recognition from our legislatures on that and no help you know with license plates or anything like that it's just uh it's just kind of interesting that they did this and then there's one last thing I'll say about it this guy Joe, Joe Gruters um he introduced the bill for the Florida State you know, the national championship thing. And he was one of two senators that actually voted against the bill for the day of image and likeness, which was just crazy. So yeah. it's just a wild thing and a, and a very strange uh, thing that to he, add to this weird week in sports. Yeah, he might be a little confused. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take a break real, real quick here, and we will be right back on Nightline the morning after. Wingo. In high school and in college, these seniors are done. It ended for them. We, we saw right here in Connecticut where ESPN is a lot of seniors protesting when all of the championships uh, were canceled here. There is that side of it where they have no say in it. Not like the pros have any say either, but they're going to go on with their careers and the ancillary people along with it. These high school seniors and these college seniors, it's done, man. There's a real hefty difference there. Golick and Wingo, weekdays from 6 to 10 on ESPN 580 Orlando. Raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney is our commitment to you at Chad Bar Law. I'm Chad Barr, and as a UCF alum, I am proud to present Nightline, the morning after show, Central Florida's only call-in show dedicated to our UCF nights every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And remember, if you or a loved one are injured in an auto accident, call us at 407-599-9036 to schedule your free consultation or visit us at chadbarlaw.com. Our clients come to us in need and leave as family. Offices Altamont Springs, Go Knights, charge on. Think you have to travel to New York or Los Angeles to get a five carat colorless diamond in a one of a kind designer setting? What if I told you people from those cities came here for these exquisite pieces of jewelry? Here to International Diamond Center. Welcome to the IDC Prestige Collection, a truly breathtaking array of large rare diamonds, two carats and up, handpicked for maximum brilliance and certified by the GIA. In addition, International Diamond Center is one of only 14 dealers in the world offering De Beers Forever Mark exceptional diamonds, featuring magnificent diamonds, five carats and up, including the rarest and most exquisite diamonds on the planet. The IDC Prestige Collection and the Forever Mark Exceptional Exceptional Diamond Collection are for the discriminating shopper with refined taste and uncompromising standards. No need to travel or have it flown in from a broker. It's all here, every day. One of America's most impressive displays of large, rare diamonds, along with the most sought-after designer rings in the world. International Diamond Center, your direct diamond importer. Four convenient Orlando locations. The Sharing Center works to prevent hunger and homelessness locally and help families in need. Consider volunteering at the Sharing Center with your family and friends. There are lots of opportunities to serve local families in crisis, for more information, visit thesharingcenter.org. Night Nation, this is Adam, one half of the dynamic duo that is the Sons of UCF, which is found only on the Nightline Sports Network. Join UCF Mike and I each week as we bring you some of the latest from in and around UCF sports, including such great segments as the Josh Heupel Translator, Top 8 Lists, and Cow of the Week. We'll also bring you some of the most in-depth and unique interviews with some of your favorite former Knights. 
You don't want to miss a moment, so make sure you subscribe to the Nightline Sports Network wherever you get your podcasts, and we'll take care of the rest. Go Knights. Charge on. Dad, thanks for taking me bowling. This is fun. I just wanted to talk to you about protecting yourself. Yeah. You know, at some point, maybe you're posting dance vids at a party. Dance vids? Yeah, the dance vids. And people around you are using cable internet. You can always call me or your mom and we'll come get you. No questions asked. Dad, I know to use internet with AT&T Fiber. You know, it's just the people with cable internet, they could have the upload speeds of internet with AT&T Fiber and they choose not to. They're not thinking, son. Dad, I'll be okay. Hey, good talk, right? All right, you're up, big guy. Just okay is not okay. Switch to AT&T Fiber with one gig internet and get upload speeds 20 times faster than cable. Find out how to bundle with AT&T TV for $39.99 a month, each for a year with 24-month and 12-month internet agreements. Limited availability may not be in your area. Check eligibility at att.com slash bundle. Speeds vary. Download max typically 940 megabits per second. Not guaranteed. $10 per month equipment fee applies. Limit three concurrent AT&T streams. Details at att.com slash att-tv. Activation, early termination, internet equipment non-return, and other charges and restrictions apply. Visit att.com slash bundle for details. Whether it's on AM 580, FM 96.5 HD2, Alexa, or Google Home, we are everywhere you hear audio. ESPN 580 Orlando, Orlando's home for the biggest events in sports. And now, back to Nightline, the morning after, on ESPN 580 Orlando, WDBO. Call now at 844-225-5580 or text at 21232. All right, back with Nightline the morning after. This is Andrew Fegley. Ben Stout is here with me. Chase Bunker in the other studio there. And uh, we're live from the Victory Casino Cruises.com studio brought to you by Chad Bar Law, raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Give Chad a call, 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com and back to sports. Um, so Or the lack of sports. So we were talking uh, a little bit there about the Florida legislature and them declaring Florida State the national basketball champions, and that's absolutely crazy as far (laughs) as I'm concerned. It kind of, you know, the legislator has turned into Florida man all of a sudden yeah. uh, with that, and and it, I think it takes away, (laughs) it takes away from from what you know, we claimed as our national champions, I believe, uh, for football in 2017. It kind of puts a a little bit of a, I don't know, a, it kind of ruins that a little bit in a way for us because I think we had that legitimately, you know, versus this. I mean, just because the, the tournament was canceled, I could say the same thing about Kansas. Kansas was ranked number one. Right. I went to Kansas. I graduated from Kansas. So, of course, I'm going to say, oh, yeah, we're the national champions. There was no tournament played out. So, I mean, we did that. We claimed the national championship in UCF football because we weren't able to get in right. to the tournament. Because difference. we were, yeah, we were, you know, because we're the, the G5 school instead of the Power 5 school, we were ousted from that. We were not allowed to compete, and we were the only undefeated team. So does Florida State have the best record in all of college basketball? I don't know. I don't believe so. They weren't ranked number one. No, you no know? They, they don't. So, I mean, I just think that that's a little crazy. Well, I, and, and it's different. It's completely different from what UCF did. Yeah, they're two totally different situations. I mean, yes, we – what Danny White did uh, back in you know early 2018 by declaring that national championship was a genius marketing move. Absolutely. Um, but but at the end of the day, the NCAA in their official rule books allow me- multiple polls to uh, recognize an, an NCAA champion, and the Coley Matrix legitimized our claim on the national championship that year, and that's the reason why we're in the official NCAA rule book. The the basketball side of things i mean we're allowed it's a 68 team tournament so i mean there there there's a it's a totally different mechanism to declare a national championship in that sport and yes we're all upset that we were robbed of the chance to see that play out this year i mean no uh, no one's more upset with with me i mean this or than me this um than the, you know that this happened because this is kind of like my christmas time of year uh, when it comes to sports um but it, it this really means nothing is what is at the end of the day is what I'm trying to say is that it really means nothing that the Senate did this because the NCAA is never going to recognize it. Chase, 
Um, I, I think that I granted I said earlier that I think Florida State has a chance, and there is a possibility that I that they could have maybe gone all the way. But I feel Agreed. like there is there's too many conflicting things to look at. Like you don't know about Dayton. Like San Diego State had 30 wins. 30, San Diego State had the most wins out of everybody. Yeah, so that's, you can I make, was just looking at that. You can say that. Yeah, Dayton, Gonzaga, like. There, there's so many different variables, whereas with UCF, like they were undefeated at the end of the season. Now, if Florida State was undefeated at the end of the season, or they, they had have the something. best record, period. Yeah. I mean, they don't even have the best record. So that, to me, it's null and void. I mean, as far as I'm concerned. All right. Hey, guys, thank you very much for joining us. We're going to be back at the, the same time next week. Uh, thank you for letting us talk about all this and, and have a good week. Stay healthy, and uh, we'll talk to you then.